Good morning. It's been a funny old day today. Got up ready to go to church and the car had uh, two inches of very hard frozen snow and um, the road is all iced up. And I'm here on my own because George is in hospital and I just wondered uh, what I was going to do. So I put on my very old Doc, Mar Doc Martins. Would you believe my dad bought them for me? Oh, I think uh, 49 years ago, something like that. And uh, got up the case and I looked uh, quite a sight really with my thick woolen skirt and my Doc Martins on the bottom and made my way. But I got a phone call from, from people at church and they said, stay put. So they're doing the service for me and here I am at home doing a service for you because I didn't want to let you down. Of course, without George, there won't be any singing <laughs> because I wouldn't like to spoil your week. But anyway, we're going to do an Advent morning prayer service and I believe the service is on the um, St. Luke's website if you want to follow it. So pause and get print that off or get it on, on so that you can see it and then we can uh, begin. So let's just take a moment of quiet on this Advent Sunday to be very still and put all the concerns of our life at the foot of the cross and look up to him who loves us. A moment to be very still and very quiet. In the name of God, who has delivered us from the dominion of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved Son, we welcome you, grace to you and peace. We are gathered to proclaim and receive in our hearts the good news of the coming of God's kingdom and so prepare ourselves to celebrate with confidence and joy the birth of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. We pray that we might respond in penitence and faith to the glory of his kingdom, its works of justice and its promise of peace, its blessings and its hopes. And as we seek to renew our allegiance to God's loving purpose, we pray for all who at this time is especially need his pity and protection. The sick in body, mind or spirit, those who suffer from loss of dignity or loss of hope, those who face the future with fear or walk in the shadow of death. May God of his grace and mercy Grant to all his people a new trust in his good providence and a new obedience to his sovereign word. For to him is most justly due all glory, honour, worship and praise, world without end. Amen. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Reveal among us the light of your presence, that we might behold your power and glory. Blessed are you, sovereign God of all, to you be praise and glory forever. In your tender compassion, the dawn from on high is breaking upon us to dispel the lingering shadows of night. As we look for your coming among us this day, open our eyes to behold your presence and strengthen our hearts and hands to do your will, that the world may rejoice and give you praise. Blessed be God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, Blessed be God forever. Now, if we were in church, we would light a candle. 
and these words would be said. People of God, awake. The day is coming soon when you shall see God face to face. Remember the ways and the works of God. God calls you out of darkness to walk in the light of his coming. <coughs> you are God's children. Lord, make us one as we walk with Christ today and forever. Amen. Now, in the silence of our own company in our homes, we all should be all conscious that God, even though we're separated, is with us and with him. We are gathered together. I will arise and go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you, and I am no more worthy to be called your child. Let's take a moment to thank God, first of all, for all the wonderful blessings that we have, the, the blessing of having technology and for life and breath and family and friends. What are you thankful for today? Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy upon us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy, and in our song will we praise our God. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading comes from the book of Jeremiah, chapter 33, and beginning at verse 14. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will fulfill the promise I made to the house of Israel and the house of Judah. In those days and at that time, I will cause a righteous branch to spring up for David, and he shall execute justice and righteousness in the land. In those days, Judah will be saved and Jerusalem will live in safety. And this is the name by which it will be called. The Lord is our righteousness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 21, and beginning at verse 25. Jesus said to his disciples, There will be signs in the sun, the moon and the stars, and on the earth distress among nations, confused by the roaring of the sea and the waves. People will faint from fear and foreboding of what is coming upon the world. For the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see 
the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Now when these things begin to take place, stand up and raise your heads because your redemption is drawing near. Then he told them a parable. Look at the fig tree and all the trees. As soon as they sprout leaves, you can see for yourselves and know that summer is already near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that the kingdom of God is near. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. Be on guard that your hearts are not weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the worries of this life, and that day catch you unexpectedly like a trap. For it will come upon all who live in the face of the earth. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape all these things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now it is, a t is time to wake out of sleep, for the night is far spent and the day is at hand. Now is our salvation nearer than when we first believed, for the night is far spent. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and put on the armour of light, for the day is at hand. Put on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make no provision for the flesh, for the night is far spent, and the day is at hand. Let's take a moment to ponder all those readings that we've heard, and different snippets of the uh, gospel message. What does it say to you and to me? Let's consider some thoughts together. Advent Sunday is called, calls us to wake up. <laughs> Ephesians 5.14, we use this expression in our normal morning prayer. Sleeper awake, rise from the dead and Christ will shine on you. Living contrary to Christ's way separates us from God. And separation from God brings death. When we continually live with a sin in our lives, sin that we haven't repented from, when we live our lives, for the most part, separated from God, it's as though we are sleepwalking. In today, it seems that we are asleep. We seem to be in that state which wants to turn over and snuggle down like I did with the minus two temperature this morning. We do it because we're comfortable and warm. In reality, when we live like that, away from God, we are under threat from death for eternity. We need to wake up and get ready to use this preparation time of Advent to examine our lives and to say sorry and turn away from those things that are dishonouring from God and separating us from him. Now I admit I'm not so very good in the early mornings but as time passes in the day I begin to feel a bit more vital. If the day doesn't hold much interest, perhaps it's a day for the chores, the ironing, ooh, 
then I tend to feel very sluggish. When the day offers something of interest or an exciting event on the cards, then I'm ready to go, fully awake and vital. The Christian message of love and the hope of promises life in abundance. It's exciting, living kingdom lives and being fully awake so that we can see and acknowledge God at work in our lives is thrilling. The gospel minds us that we should not let our hearts be weighed down. It actually says, with dissipation, drunkenness and the worries of life. My word, the worries of life can really get us down. I know I felt that while George has been in hospital. It's, you're not quite the same. But you know, when I turn to God, things change. I feel much better. I know he's in control. I know he's got the best plan for George and for me that he, we could ever think or imagine. So heavy heart could be said to come from not believing and not trusting in God's word and doing what is not right. If we live according to God's word, then we will awake from our sleep in sin and find ourselves vital and ready for the day. Once we're awake, we need to be aware. Awareness comes from knowledge. We need to be aware of God, aware of others, and aware of ourselves. Are we self-aware? How often are we aware of others? How do you get to know someone? Well, the answer is by having a relationship with them. The longer and closer it is, the more you come to know. To know more about God, we need to come close to Christ because Christ is the exact representation of God. That's what Hebrews says. We can only come to the Father through the Son. We need to communicate with the Lord in regular prayer and let him speak to us through his word, through other people and our circumstances. We can only listen to him, though, if we know his voice, so that we can discern what is from him and what is not. We need to be aware of others, because Jesus commands us to love one another. There's a lovely prayer in Thessalonians that says, May the Lord make you increase and abound in love for one another. Oh, that's the desire of my heart for the parishes that God has called me to. And unless we listen and come to know one another, we cannot love one another. And of course, unless we seek to be self-aware, then we don't realise when we're sinning. Sometimes I look in the mirror. In fact, looking at this camera here reminds me of all the wrinkles and the grey coming up. And I reflect on how I might be. That's one kind of self-awareness. It can be a bit of a shock looking at ourselves, reflecting on our lives, and we realise there may be things that we need to repent of, make changes. I can learn then, when I do that, to use my strengths and my weaknesses in more positive ways. You know, you either get this or you don't. Those who get it enjoy the fruits of their knowledge. Others 
will live with frustrations, worry and poverty of spirit. So ask yourself this Advent, how aware are you of God, others and yourself? Perhaps this is a good time to reflect and to make some New Year resolutions. Once we are awake and aware, we need to be alert. We miss so much when we're not alert. There was an experiment a while ago to find out whether we are truly lucky or unlucky, as some people say. Well, the unlucky people were sent down a street where £10 notes had been placed. They spotted a few, but the people who called themselves lucky found all of them. The difference was that the unlucky ones walked with their heads down and in their own world. The lucky ones walked along the street fully awake, aware and alert. They all looked around them as they went. We can miss out so much of what God is doing in our lives and in the lives of those around us because we're not alert. And there's another sense in which we need to be alert. It's a sort of military sense. Are you so, do you often wonder how they stop terrorists? Because there are people looking out and watching. And no doubt there are spies from other countries in our country. And so we need to be aware of the counterfeit values that are mas masquerading of God. The idea that taking God out of society because religion causes trouble is a lie. Saying that what people do in their private lives is a lie. If you have a person in public office who is known to steal, would you make him the treasurer? If someone cheats on his wife and can do that, or her husband, partner, will they not cheat others just as easily? And what about the personal traps that surround us, that lead us away from God and not towards him. The lies that tell us we need, for example, to hold on to every penny tightly. J. John, the theologian, says that we hold on to the pound so hard that the queen cries. <laughs> and we will have security and plenty. Well, that won't happen because if we make money direct our actions, we become mean and not generous. We become mean in spirit as a result. The warning of Advent is stark. Be alert at all times, praying that you may have the strength to escape these things. That will take place and to stand firm before the Son of Man. The time is now to wake up from our slumber, to be aware that we, uh, so that we can fully participate in the kingdom and be prepared for God's return, for the Lord's return. And we need to be alert so that we have the strength to escape all that is at work trying to destroy or prevent his kingdom from coming here on earth as it is in heaven. And so we say, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Well, I hope that's helped you with some thoughts that might 
help you through this advent it certainly reminds me of the time i need to reflect and look at what i'm doing why i'm doing it how it affects others and to build relationships with god and other people that are based on love and awareness peace and joy let's say together a creed saying that we believe holy 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 is the lord god almighty who was and is and is to come we believe in god the father who created all things for by his will they were created and have their being. We believe in God the Son, who was crucified, for with his blood he purchased us for God from every tribe and language, from every people and nation. We believe in God the Holy Spirit. The Spirit and the Bride say, Come, even so. Come, Lord Jesus. Amen. The Collect for Advent Sunday. Shall we pray? Almighty God, give us grace to cast away the works of darkness and to put on the armour of light. Now in the time of this mortal life, in which your Son, Jesus Christ, came to us in great humility, that on the last day, when he shall come again in his glorious majesty to judge the living and the dead, we may rise to the life immortal through him who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's pray. Oh, Father God, as we come to the foot of your cross, searching for that day and waiting for that day when you will return and make all things new. We pray for your kingdom across the nations. We pray, Lord, for all those who are suffering terrible problems those who are suffering because of war, famine, flood. We pray, Lord, for those who are suffering from climate change. And now again, once again, the threat of COVID creating problems across the nations with new variants. We pray for refugees. We pray for aid agencies and we pray that you will have mercy upon us. Oh Lord, the problems of this world seem so great and yet we know that you are in control and one day you'll make all things new again. Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. We pray Lord for your church, wherever it might be found, for its leaders and those who are seeking to show your love and build your kingdom in the various places across the world. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. We pray, Lord, for our own churches. We pray that priests, readers, PCC members and wardens will look to create that place where Christ is at the centre, a community that reaches out and creates the community around them with Christ at the centre. O oh Lord, have mercy on us and hear our prayer as we cry, Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. Lord, we know that there are many people struggling, people struggling with ill health. And so at this time, we pray for Margaret Miller, 
Reverend Stephen Jackson, Anthony Staples, Rowan Gardell, Alex, Josephine Bervick, Joe Parks, Cavan, Charles McCumber, Peg Malcolm, Kate Brantingham, Trevor Linford, Teresa, Isla, Alex and Noreen. We give you thanks for doctors, nurses, carers, all those people who are looking after the sick. We pray for research uh, scientists as they seek new remedies. So Lord, we pray for your healing touch upon all those we know who are ill, those who are recovering. And we pray that they will know your loving arms around them and the peace of your presence in their hearts. And so we pray, Maranatha, come. Lord Jesus. And we remember those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, especially those who are hurting because of COVID and they weren't able to say goodbye. We foresee those, their loved ones. We pray, Father, that you will draw close to them. For all those who are grieving the loss of loved ones, but at this time we particularly remember the family and friends of Dorothy Deasy, Bishop Jonathan Gledhill, Edward Trubshaw, Pat Green and Linda Thornley. Father, we know your promise that one day we will all be together again in your kingdom, that you call those who are called by your name those who have believed in you, to life eternal with you. And we long for that day when we will be able to see our loved ones face to face again. And so we pray, Maranatha, come Lord Jesus. Awaiting his coming in glory, gathering up, all our thoughts and prayers we pray as our saviour taught us our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, we've had a time together and whilst only the cat is here with me, Poppy, I don't feel alone because the whole company of heaven is with me and across the nations across our country and in our churches people are praying with me too and with you take a moment to be conscious of that once more and then i'll say the blessing the lord be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us help us to be a blessing to each other and to our communities, that your ways may be known among us. Let all the prayful praise you, O God. Let all the people praise you. Amen. May the Lord, when he comes, find us watching and waiting. Amen. <coughs> Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hopefully next week things will be a bit more normal, but until then, I hold you all in my prayers and in my heart. Goodbye. Thank you for joining me.